Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, and it is May 28th, 2021. Again, if you're watching this sometime down the road in the future, um, we are continuing to work our way through the book of Acts, and we are in the 17th chapter. We started the 17th chapter yesterday. Today, we're going to tackle verses 10 through 15 in the 17th chapter. Uh, we left off with Paul and Silas um, and <clears throat> being in uh, Thessalonica and some things erupted in Thessalonica and uh, the Jews got jealous and they hired a bunch of ruffians to, as what it says in the script, in the NRSV, it calls them ruffians, to uh, cause a riot. And uh, they uh, went and accosted Jason at his house. They couldn't find Silas and Paul. And so they went and accosted poor Jason uh, at his house and a few others and drug them out and uh, turned them over to the authorities and they were arrested, but they, 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 we left off with Jason and his associates posting bail and being able to go, uh, but no doubt still in some hot water. Just because you got posted bail and got let out doesn't mean you don't still have to appear before the magistrate, as we should know. <clears throat> So, and it is a serious charge that they've been talked or been accused of this uh, saying that there is another king, not just the, the, the ruler, the emperor. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that could get you in hot water in, Roman, in the Roman world. Uh, that right there. So it is a serious charge that they have against them. <clears throat> so they are about to send Paul and Silas away. Uh, because of all of this disruption and discord and disturbance. Um, and that's where we kept, catch up to today. So let's look at Acts 17, 10 to 15. <clears throat> Excuse me, I still have a little frogginess in my voice today. That very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas off to Berea. And when they arrived, they went to the Jewish synagogue. These Jews were more receptive than those in Thessalonica, for they welcomed the message very eagerly and examined the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, including not a few Greek women and men of high standing. But when the Jews of Thessalonica learned that the word of God had been proclaimed by Paul and Berea as well, they came there too to stir up and incite the crowds. Then the believers immediately sent Paul away to the coast, but Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those who conducted Paul bought brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving instruction to Ephesus and Timothy joined him as soon as possible, they left him. So Paul's been left in Athens, but we've gone through Berea. And the the, um, the Bereans, the interesting thing is, uh, we hear that word Berean, there is a Berean church or churches, um, and sometimes there's bookstores or whatnot. You see that word, you know, that name used, and it's because of this passage here. Um, and they they have welcomed the message eagerly, and that's what the point is uh, here: is that they are listening to what Paul has to say, and uh, they are then weighing that against Scripture, and they are some of them are converting, so they seem to be more receptive there, perhaps more like a uh, 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 Derby where Paul was at, where he was had more success there than in, in Lystra, remember. Uh, so, <clears throat> but the word, the, the, the Bereans are oftentimes, uh, you know, um, lauded for their, their, their ability to see the scripture. There's a little bit of irony in that, however, uh, in that my understanding is that the, that the uh, Berean churches tend to have a more narrow view of scripture. They tend to be a little more fundamentalist, if you will. Um, and here in this scripture verse, um, Paul is telling them a new message. He's telling them a new thing about Jesus, totally new. And in order to find it in scriptures, they had to take a different stance. They had to take a different look at the scripture. We talk about lenses sometimes, but um, you know, and that you look at the scripture through the lenses of your life. But also sometimes you have to look about where you're looking. What's my perspective on scripture? Am I looking at it from here, or am I looking at it from over here? Get on the camera, you know, here as opposed to this this way. Um, and so, what's my what's my vantage point on the scripture and how am I looking at it? I would present to you that if those Bereans would have stayed in a strictly Jewish perspective of looking at the scriptures as they have always looked at them, as they were told to look at them, 
they wouldn't have seen Jesus in them. We're used to seeing Jesus in the Old Testament because we look at it from a Christian worldview. We look at it from our understanding, from what we've been taught. And because of that, we see Christ in the Old Testament. We are able to see him from that different vantage point. But it's not the vantage point that the Jewish people would have you. Ironically, today, um, the people that would take a more narrow view of that and see, try to look at the scripture strictly from a Jewish perspective would be the people on the more on the liberal side of the spectrum, whereas the, the typically the Bavarians would be more on the right side, the left or the conservative side of the spectrum. Um, <clears throat> so it's a, there is a great deal of irony in this, I find, as someone that identifies as more, being more moderate and wanting to try to look at both ways. Um, I see Jesus in the Old Testament. Um, I know that many on uh, many of my fr fellow pastors try to to pat that down. Others laud it up a little overly sometimes uh, and see him everywhere. But I do see Jesus in the Old Testament a great deal, especially in the Psalms, especially in Isaiah. Um, <clears throat> but had these fellows and ladies looked at Scripture only from the vantage point of their Jewish traditions, they wouldn't have seen Christ in them. They would have seen King David, King Hezekiah, what have you. Um, down the list of all of the all of the things. So there's a great deal of irony there. And I think the message we need to take away from this is that, that sometimes we have to switch out our perspective, our uh, prescriptions on our lenses, or we need to step over to the side and look look a little bit differently. Um, we need to be watching uh, because I think that when Jesus comes again, a lot of us self-proclaiming Christians are going to miss him because just like the Jews missed Jesus when he came the first time. So I do have that concern that we will we will be so narrow in our in our perception um, that we might miss him. There's the other thing you know that you can go too far. You can have such an open mind that your brains roll out. Don't want to do that. That's why you stay in more of a moderate position. Um, no doubt I've upset some people with that vantage point, um, but that is uh, the way I see scripture. Uh, that's why I think that it's best to see scripture is to try to. Uh, to uh, have that ability to switch out your lenses every once in a while and uh, look at it from someone else's viewpoint as well and try to understand why they are seeing what they're seeing. And I think that's what the Bereans are doing. They're trying to understand why is Paul seeing what he's seeing? Um, what's going on here? And so they're willing to put on those prescription lenses that Paul's handing out that day. So I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, have a very blessed day. Uh, it's kind of another dreary, wet day, it feels like. Uh, so those of us that haven't gotten our gardens in are not getting any, gaining any ground. And I'm definitely not gaining ground because of my lung issues. But, oh well, it be what it may. So have a very blessed day. Be a blessing to someone today. Talk to them about Jesus, please. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.